Hi church, my name is Brian Kalinga and I'm married to a wonderful wife and blessed with two daughters. I thank you so much for tuning in today into our, our channel and uh, I want to first of all really thank the Ocean Leadership, the Ocean Church. I've been blessed, I don't know about you, but uh, there are different opportunities that they have always been creative, uh, creating for us to be able to connect, to grow, to serve, and to keep going. And I hope you're doing that wherever you are. If you're doing that, say yes in the comments down there. And uh, I am also grateful to God so much for today to be able to come to you and share a wonderful word from the Lord for you. And I, it has blessed me, and I know it's going to bless you so much today. So uh, as we start... Um, I'm going to be talking about um, God's promise. And this particular promise today is God's promise for protection of our lives. And, um, and I'm going to, I've titled this message as Impossible Protection. Impossible Protection. Yes. So um, I want to look specifically... Um, into this promise of protection of God into our lives. And, uh, and how many people know that every promise has a condition? I know that. I hope you do so. And as we look at this particular one, we, we, you may be asking yourself, why is it conditional? Yes, God's love is unconditional, but there is a certain um, response that he desires of us to be able to experience uh, these promises into our lives. And uh, I want us to right away, we're going to talk, talk more about it, but at the moment I want us to go right to the word of God and read from the book of Psalms. And we're reading from Psalms 91 verses 1 to fall. And this is what the Bible says. Whoever dwells in the secret place of the Most High will rest in the shadow of Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings he will, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampant. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that you desire that all men, all people on the earth to know you and to come to a personal relationship with you. Like we see in your word, teach us today. Open our eyes to the wonders of your love that we may be transformed by your word. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and let it be. So I'll start with a story. I am a football fan. Uh, and before you confuse it with soccer, American football, I, I mean, I, I talk, I'm talking about soccer. And uh, for during this pandemic, uh, some of us who love Premier League uh, follow every week the weekend experience, you know, the, the rush, the, oh, we are missing it, we have been missing it. Uh, and particularly, I hope my team, will, when, when, when it's back, uh, they will be back in form. The, the form the which they, 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 were, they had before. Uh, but on a serious note, uh, let us continue to pray for healing. There are many people who have lost their loved ones. Uh, many people are hurting all over the world. And let's continue to pray for healing and protection of all these people during this time of uh, the pandemic, uh, coronavirus. And let's let it be solution. Let it be a healing in the name of Jesus Christ. So before you think 
I'm going to talk about soccer and uh, let's go back to the word. And we read from Psalms. Um, Psalms is one of the amazing books that is written mostly by King David. But uh, it was written about 1054 BC before Christ. But this particular Psalm 91 that we have read, uh, the author is not clear. It's, it's unknown. It's not right, right, rightly um, so. But uh, we have several studies, Judaic studies, Hebraic uh, writings that suggest that it was Moses who wrote and composed this declaration. And um, the one of the other way of knowing who is the author of the book is by looking at the titles. If you have a Bible that has those titles, probably that, that, that is one of the ways you can know who is the writer. So we see from Psalms 90, the title of that psalm is A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. So it is safely to say that uh, it's a continuation up to 91 and um, Moses composed this, but uh, who wrote it is King David. But there are other opportunities, there are other studies that have also clearly shown that these, this was written by Moses, like uh, we, we, we see Zodar, uh, the Hebraic ancient text, that is like a commentary that says um, that this study shows that the describes the scripture, the text describes that Moses um, wrote this prayer when he had just finished building the tabernacle, uh, which means the temple, uh, then when they, are, they were in the uh, desert. And there was a cloud of God that was, had covered him when he was saying these words. And the other, of course, uh, writings says, uh, suggest that he was speaking this declaration as a prayer when there was a cloud covering him as he, as he was ascending in Mount Sinai. Uh, at that time, he was reciting these words uh, of protection against the angel of destruction. But that is ancient time. Uh, but even in our time, this Psalms 91 is regarded as a psalm of protection. Uh, is regarded as it's, it's themed in ghost protection and rescue from danger. And in our lives today, um, different armies, including American army, um, de declares this as the soldier's prayers, uh, a source of comfort and protection, even in the times, hard times. So this psalm is full of God's promises of protection. So let's go back to the text that we read, read, read before. Verses 1 starts by saying, whoever. Whoever, this means anyone. It doesn't discriminate. It's open. Wherever you are coming from, whether you're from Michigan, Texas, Kitale, or Tosamaganga, where I come from, whoever, it says whoever, whoever. The word, the next word, it says any, means anybody, whoever anybody dwells in the shelter of the Most High. The next word is dwell. And, and we, we can really learn a lot of things from that word. But uh, that word in the original text, it means yashab. And yashab means to sit, to wait, to stay, to be set, to tarry. All those words. In the shelter of the Most High. Wow, this is amazing. This writes... The, the, the writer stresses the position right away. This is the position that whoever needs to take to allow him to experience these, the rest of the blessings. And he says, dwell. 
and allow me to use out of the, the word yashab, out of those all meanings I will use today for my, this sharing. Uh, sit and stay. So whenever we read dwell means whoever sits and stays. Can you repeat that again? Sits and stays. Exactly. So um, going back, let us continue to the word and we'll read with that, uh, that in the background. I want you to read this passage again. So we're starting. Whoever dwells means sit and stays in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Wait a second. Is, is he referring to a different person or the same person? Let's read it a bit slower. As I was studying, I was struck by that. Is, he, is the writer writing about the same person? And I, as I studied, I, I saw the writer mentioning God in different faces, different ways, different names that he used. And as I continued studying, I discovered that each name meant had something to do with protection. And we're going to look at that. So again, I'm a teacher. Again, I, I wanted to open back to that scripture. And I was going to underline these words, these names, one by one. And let's start again. Whoever dwells, sits, and stays in the shelter of the Most High. Underline that word. Most high. Most high means Elion. That's the word Elion. Will rest in the shadow of Almighty. That's another one. Underline it. Means El Shaddai. I will say of the Lord. Another one. Underline it. That means Yahweh. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, the fourth one. It means Elohim in whom I trust. This is beautiful. This is sweet as you study the word of God. Each name describes a different aspect of God's ability to protect. And the first one that we read, most high, Elion, means greater than any threat we face. The second word, Almighty El Shaddai means emphasizes on his power to confront and to destroy every enemy. Incredible. The third word is Lord, means Yahweh. It assures us that his presence is always with us. Praise God. My God, Elohim expresses the truth that God has chosen to associate intimately with those whom, who trust in him. Amazing. I love this. So God is so good. So I can as well read this passage again. We're just going to go back. It's so beautiful. So I can as well say, whoever dwells, sit and stays in the shelter of the Most High, Elion, the Greater One, will rest in the shadow of Almighty El Shaddai, the Ebu One. I will say of the Lord Yahweh, the Present One, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Elohim, the Intimate One. He is greater. He is able. He is present. He is intimate. Hallelujah. That is so incredible there. And let's continue with third, the, 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 the third verse. Verse 3. Surely he will who? Who is greater? Who is able? Who is present? Who is intimate? He who is my God, surely he will save you from the fouler snares and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. 
and he, under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampant. I, 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 like I mentioned earlier, every promise has a condition. And we see the, start, the chapter started, the entire chapter, the condition started right in the beginning. And it's in verse 1 and it says the word dwell. Let's talk about this a, a, a bit. And, you know, in our time in the Christian circles, there's a confusion. There's a confusion where there are those who believe that all conditions were paid for by Jesus and through his grace. Hence, they, is, they deny any responsibility or any action that we need to do responding to faith, to, 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 to truth. And promises of God uh, has for us. And we deny working by faith, paying the price of greatness, doing the word. The fact is, much as God's love, as I said before, is unconditional to humanity, God expects a response of faith coupled with action to release his ultimate protection. So there is a balance there of faith and action that has to take place in a believer that can only come with wisdom and understanding in God's word. So let us now uh, go back on that condition of God's protection on this passage and see how we can apply it in our lives today especially now time when it's really relevant. And <clears throat> the word dwell, as we said, yashab, we, 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 we agreed we're going to use sit and stay. Sit and stays. And let's start with sit. So sitting is a passive action. And... You know, nowadays I love technology, I love gadgets, I love everything. technology has evolved so much. And we have AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, these applications, these phones that we work with, they can, they, they're able to monitor our blood pressure, monitor our activity, body activities, and, and so forth. So even when you are seated, they're able to predict your stress level. As you breathe in and breathe out, they can know your heart beats. And it's so amazing how far technology has gone. So my wife and I, we, we, we are using this in uh, trying to challenge ourselves healthy-wise and just to have a, <clears throat> an active life. So we have a challenge. The World uh, Health Organization has this uh, statistic that says you have to, at least for uh, in a day, to walk about 6,000 steps that will be an active life. And so my, my wife always beats me up to that because her work entails like moving up and down. She, she, she always wins. Uh, most, I have, where I work, there's a story building, so I try as much as I can. I just go up and, and down as, as I can when I'm not busy. But uh, we're averaging about 5,000. By the end of this year, our target is 8,000. So we reach 8,000. I hope we can make it. And I'm so, uh, we're doing so good so far. Um, but it's incredible that sitting does not signify passive, inactive, um, negligence, but it's an action. And we read so much, in, whenever it's mentioned in Old Testament, it signifies something. Uh, in fact, you remember in Psalms uh, chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man who does not sit in the seat of mockers. So to sitting, sitting to God really means a lot. Uh, and it signifies the position, our position, our beliefs, our identity, our authority. So um, when we talk about sitting... God desires us to be more alive than active. That means full of activity. He wants us to be alive. 
So he was, he wants us alive, as I said, in, in him, alive in him, knowing him, to be conscious of his thoughts, his heart, his compassion. At a point we, we respond in activity. So, but much as so, out of compassion, not to earn anything, but to yield to his love. Not to earn anything, but to yield his love. So, when we, 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 we read sitting, and as we study in the Old Testament, uh, is something that um, we, we rarely see it, but I'm going to refer, in, in, the, uh, in the tabernacle of Moses, or temple of Solomon, there was no chair, uh, because the priest work was never finished. To sit means you have finished the work of atonement. But praise God, Jesus finished the work at the cross and he has sat down at the right hand of God. And that means that is the work is finished. Our sin have been forgiven. We can now also sit and rest with him. But I want us to read in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4 to 7. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 7. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in, tra in trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ. So he made us alive. He raised us up together. He made us sit together with him in heavenly places. Praise God. Praise God. So this shows that Part of the condition that which man cannot do has been finished. Part of the condition has been finished. The, the bigger part is finished. So this means that we are legible. We are fully partakers of these promises. There is nothing to do to earn the right to partake of this promise. Nothing we can do to earn access to them. Everything, I mean, the hard part is done. So you ask yourself, what's, what's the remaining bit? What's it? We may be asking yourself, and let us see this example. I, I am an IT by profession. I, I love um, I live what I do. and. Uh, Currently, I am a cyber security practitioner, analyst, and uh, that's what I do in a daily basis. So I, I, I will switch to technology a bit, but not to not the hard work, but just just a bit uh, to explain something. Um, um, so as I was preparing, I thought of something that is simple that everyone can understand in the field of uh, what I do in a daily basis. So how many people have smartphones? Uh, yes, I, th I think everyone, you might be watching using a smartphone. Of course, m most of us have smartphones, have laptops, we are in the information age. So you may come across this word antivirus uh, or anti-malware um, it's just basically um, antiviruses are libraries of ways to discover the viruses that get into the uh, either devices, laptop, whatsoever to destroy, to 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 to, to um, delete the information, and so it's basically 
a program that contains library of new ways to detect, eliminate, disarm, and the latest malware programs. Those are viruses. And so the viruses are, are in a business of finding new ways of uh, hiding themselves so that they may bypass that um, antiviruses and that wall, that protection. And um, the antiviruses, the viruses only come to kill, steal, and destroy your computers. Does it sound familiar? Kill, steal, and destroy? Oh, yes. So um, the antiviruses, like, likewise, need to keep updating, needs to keep the latest libraries, the latest ways uh, of being able to block these viruses that can destroy our devices. Uh, and so um, if they are not updated, if they're not connected to the internet to update their libraries, they become vulnerable, uh, hence penetrable, and to make them invulnerable, guarded, and stoppable, impossible, they have to connect to the internet to get their libraries. So um, this shows that, from this analogy, shows much as you have a protection, expensive software, Unless it is connected to the internet to receive the updates, it is as good as nothing, as no protection is possible. So likewise, we need to stay. There is another word. Do you remember sit and stay? To stay connected, conscious, stay conscious, stay alive in God. Yes, we have seated together with him. We have access. We have a privilege to partake, but we need to stay connected to him. And so what does it mean to stay connected? We keep our God's connection with him, God alive. And I know you might be asking yourself how to do that. You will keep him. The Bible says in Isaiah 26 verse 3, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed, he stayed on him because he trusts him. And how do I apply this word in my life? You're asking yourself. It's too good to be true. It's very simple. Number one, trust in him with all your life. That's number one. Make him your Lord. Make him your God. Accept him as the Most High, as the Almighty God, as the Lord, as the present one. Accept him. You can make him the Lord and Savior of your life by simply confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing with your heart that he died for your sin and God raised him from dead. In fact, you can pray that prayer right now and change the story and put you in another place all together. And it's just so simple as this. And I want you, as you are, if you are ready right now, I want you to pray this prayer with me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I declare now that you are my Lord and I believe with all my heart that you died for my sins and God raised you from the dead so that I may live for you and with you. Thank you, Jesus. I am yours. You are now my God and my Lord. Hallelujah. It's that simple. And if you have made that prayer for the first time, I want to encourage you uh, make sure you, you in the comments there, there will be a link uh, where you can tell us that you made that decision for the first time and we're going to be able to work with you so praise God remember to do that remember to share that number that is number one that makes you to sit with him number two is to stay and how do you stay by studying the word of God we study his word to get understanding, wisdom, so that we can apply it 
on our lives. Learn to know these promises. The mind of God in everything in your life, your health, your finances, your marriage, your work, your relationships, your children, your protection. Know it for yourself. Know it for yourself. Desire to do that. Get a physical Bible. Get a study Bible. Ask somebody and, and, and this. connect with the church. Somebody will just teach you how you can study more the word of God for yourself. Number three, meditate on God's word. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, as I conclude, keep this book of the law always in your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. We need to keep his word on our lips. To speak it. To meditate it. Not only in our heads, but we need to speak it. We need to meditate on it. And it's okay to read, but you need to memorize it. You need to shout it. You need to sing it. You need to pray it. Take the scripture and ponder on it, mutter on it, until it sinks down in your heart. That way is where you keep connecting. At the same time, you know, we're in the world where there's a lot of information that is coming. Starve the fears. Feed your spirit. Feed your heart with the word. Meditate on it. Say it back. As a thought comes in, oh, say the word. Say the word. Memorize it. Speak it back. Pray it. Sing it. Shout it. So whoever dwells, whoever sits and stays in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of Almighty. It is God's desire that we become alive in his promises. It's God's desire that we become constantly conscious of his protection. He desires us to always be connected to, to him, conscious not of what is surrounding us, but what he has done. He is faithful as God. He is greater. He is able. He is present. He is personal. He is my impassable protection. Think on this. I want us to pray. I want to pray for you today. And let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. And Father, thank you for your heart and mind that you desire us to be alive in you. To to sit in your promises, to sit, to remember what you have done on the cross, but at the same time connect with you by studying the word, by memorizing it, by meditating on your word, by having a fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, keeping ourselves in you, Father. I thank you that we trust that you are our impossible protection. During this season, we believe that you are God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So until we meet again, stay refreshed in the presence of God. Stay connected to the church in all the avenues that are open. We love you so much and thank you for hearing this word. God bless you.